picture? No, it's a Zoom Zoom webinar. Web asked for the krill. Oh, hey, uh, Max is here. Um, I'm uh, interested in krill in general and the story with Dr. Richard Allen Miller uh, in, in, in particular. Very well. Which portion of the story are you interested in? Um, <sighs> What was, uh, why was, why, why was Dr. Richard Allen Miller invited and what was downloaded? What was the reason for that? His mind was open to many things that we were also aware of. Uh -huh. His connection to us was almost, very evident, but, we could not avoid him. I mean that in the sense that the information that he put forth originally was information that we had put out through to the human collective, and he was the one that gathered it. Uh -huh. This was our connection to him originally. This uh -huh. is how the military on your planet knew that he had this information, but they let him creativity, creatively write about it. And then they asked us if it was correct. Uh-huh. Was it, it correct? Was, yes. Okay. 94.7%. Okay. So we then were able to meet. Oh, first, first he wrote and then you met? Yes. I see. Um, what role his wife did his wife play, uh, Iona? His wife was supportive in his actions and supportive in all things that he did. She was very much a fan of all of his thought processes. Did she do the channeling herself? Some of it. Uh-huh. Did, did she carry any keys to the knowledge? She did. Uh huh. What sort of keys? Whenever he was writing, she would be his editor in some uh -huh. way. Uh huh. Uh huh. And as she saw some information, there were places where she added her own thought processes and own facts that would fill in some of the gaps that he was feeling or having, or correcting some mistakes. She was very intuitive. Uh-huh. She did not do a body of work, but yet she was able to connect to it through him. I see. Um, so what, uh, what download did you give to Richard at when, when you met? There was more than one. It uh -huh. only takes a few minutes to give a download. Okay. So we gave him several different ones. Uh -huh. And to see which ones would open up that he would be able to understand 
and connect to. Some of these downloads were connected to his original body of work, which he understood, but he did not look at that as downloaded information, uh -huh. but not more as information extending his previous work. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Also, we gave him some work or downloads about biogenesis. Uh -huh. We also gave him some downloads of metaphysical thought processes about the universe to see if he could grasp some of those concepts. Uh -huh. We also gave him a download that was about vibrational technology to see if he could grasp those concepts. In some of these downloads, he was able to grasp bits and pieces of these thought processes, which we found interesting, which pieces he was able to grasp. It's unusual that someone like him was able to grasp the more difficult aspects of the problems and not the simpler aspects of uh -huh. Uh -huh. So his mind was very abstract when it came to dealing with the bringing about of the information within his Form you one moment. The frontal cortex. Uh huh. We know now that he is a brilliant man, but that all the concepts that we were able to download were not accepted and into his thought processes the way that the original ideas were. Okay. I believe that is because he was more fascinated with that particular thought process than some of the others. It uh -huh. seems that he excels where he is interested. If he of is course. not extremely interested, he does not excel. Uh huh. We gave him opportunities to be a part of this other information, which he still has, but has not connected to it in a very firm way yet. Were you the person who gave him the information? Yes. Could you provide your name or nickname? Selena. Did you say Selena? Selena. Oh, thank you. Selena. Um, are you female? We are looked at as hermaphroditic. Okay. Um, so would you like to uh, give me some of the information which is uh, compatible with my projects? You will get it in a form of downloads. If you are able to understand the downloads, they will open up. Thank you. I welcome that. Very well. We are looking for others to receive things from us. We have not experimented with very many in the human race at this point. The minds of the humans on this planet are not up to capacity or evolutionary process to bring forth uh, understanding with the facts that we bring to them. Right. Right. Information can be easily downloaded into the subconscious and into the brain, 
but not easily formatted into logical thought. My focus is on deciphering the vibrational codes of the genome. One moment, please. Yes, we are aware of your work. Thank you. When doing downloads, make sure to keep me far from being sick. I am very easily getting disbalanced, but whenever I'm in good shape, please download more. We will give you a short download only. Okay. This will prevent you from illness. Thank you. If this download proves to be fruitful for you, more downloads will come in short first. Thank you. I welcome that. It is something we are looking to find some individuals that can understand and process our downloads. It takes a, a very interesting mind to be able to even find the information. This is what was interesting about Richard, is that he could find the information that we downloaded rather quickly within a, a few weeks and months. The second portions of the downloads, he did not pick up on right away because he was focused on the first download. Uh -huh, I see, I understand. And he never really picked up large portions of other downloads because of that focus. But he did pick up fragments of things that are well beyond human understanding, which we found interesting. I see. What's his alien background? He has an alien background in Sirius, and there is some reptilian in him. Uh huh. But his focus is more Syrian and Fendorian and reptilian, which is a very unusual combination. Perhaps this is why he was able to open up to this particular information is because these are very disturbingly different cultures. I understand. But yes, he could find common ground within them. Interesting. Do you have any update on what is happening on the planet right now? We are going through a big transformation and uh, uh, lots of things are puzzling. Yes. This period of time will, you will find will be of a great change. The disturbances that you saw recently are not yet over. But the person in the leadership position has a greater thought process for leadership than the previous. He wants to actually do well by the people and he will try to advance that. His life will constantly be in danger. The planet as a whole is going through great growing change. It would be difficult to explain it to you. I see things more in a pictorial way than I do in a verbal way. Uh-huh. 
it's a swirling contrast of thoughts and images at this time. Yes, Cabal is still there, and they are still looking to do the things that they want to do. They are hindered at every turn because of positivity and because of unforeseen information and unforeseen activities. They are uh -huh. not in complete control as they wish to be. Uh -huh. And so therefore things are not exactly the way they want them to be quite at this time. They were hoping for a greater progression by now, but it is not so. So they will continue to move forward with their plan, but they must make many changes to it. I see. I was surprised how successful they were. They have been greatly successful up until recently. I see. Was there any truth be behind QAnon stories that uh, the military did a lot of uh, cleanup in the government? Only a very small amount of truth in there. There was some cleanup in the government, but it was not as much as they said. It was not as devastating as it would be seen by others. Um, so what was the purpose of the virus except to introduce the harsh measures and take grab of the uh, control or uh, immediate control? Is there like um, an additional benefit for the cabal? The virus is not over yet. Right. The cabal would like it to be more virulent and is working on making it so. They like the fact that people are quarantined and are separated from one another. This gives them an opportunity for them to poison their minds on looking at conspiracy theories and negativities online instead of doing positive interaction one with another. So they are still working on keeping people separated. So how far are we from uh, uh, computerized mind control of, uh, of the population? That would defeat their purpose at this time. They do not actually want to control all minds. There are a few minds that they want to control, those they already have control of. Aren't they introducing some sort of vaccines for mind control? The vaccines, they do not want people to take the vaccines. That is why there is so much rumor that they are bad for you. They would want you to believe that the vaccine would cause problems, but it causes healing, which they do not want. Uh, are we they coming? Cannot, Go ahead. Go ahead. They cannot afford to put mind bending information or technology into the into the vaccines at this time. Uh, is 5G designed to have mind control, to produce mind control? It is produced to have mind numbing effects, but not mind control. But it would more cause Fuzziness of brain, loss of thought process, and short-mindedness. Uh, is the open contact coming anytime soon? Open contact is something coming as soon as possible, 
not this year, nor maybe next, but very soon after, it will have to come. What's what's pushing for that? The thought process behind this first contact is unification of the world. That's the thought process of the aliens, right? Yes. So the aliens are pushing for the for the open contact. Yes. What's their uh, arguments or uh, what? During what... this next couple of years, you will see much information brought about by regular human beings that will verify and uh, show that aliens do exist on your planet and other places. Also, the megalithic society are becoming a gateway to the future uh -huh. the nation. There uh -huh. are going to be many different kinds of information revealed because now the ancient scrolls that could not be touched because they would fall apart can okay. now could not can now be read with light variances. Yes, machines uh -huh. have been invented that can now read burnt scrolls and fragile scrolls and scrolls that could once not been read. Yes, I understand. More information will be coming out. The Book of Enoch will be completed within the next couple of years. The Book of Enoch is a very large compilation of alien activities. And it is incomplete at this point, but it should be completed soon if all goes well. Nice. Nice. You mean completed the ancient things or completed added new stories? If the ancient stories of Enoch have not been completed. And so therefore they shall be completed with the opening of new information that could not be opened before. I understand. Uh, but you're not implying that the ancient things are created now. The ancient things are just being uh, discovered, right? They were once just thought that mankind was able to do amazing work somehow. Now they're really realizing that this was not the work of humans. And so they are now going to open up the discoveries of how these things were created and why certain information exists that makes no sense to modern man. Um, recently, we came across a story that um, the Egyptian god uh, Tols um, stole the emerald tablets from 12 Magi king, kings. Can you elaborate on that story? The story is not yet finished. Uh -huh. the, the 12 holographic disc was broken into pieces and the information sent into Lumerian crystals throughout the galaxy. Uh -huh. Some are here on the seven continents of your planet and others are on six other planets in the galaxy. Okay. Toth has not been able to recover the final disk. This is the disk of all the algorithms of the universe. He is able to understand some of the algorithms of creation, but this would give him full understanding of all algorithms that exist. Now, okay. remember this, because the universe is constantly changing and, and constantly moving, all algorithms will constantly be changing. And this is one thing that a growth cannot keep in a computer because it is too vast uh, to keep 
that information uh, going. The okay. universe is in constant flux and change. These algorithms will constantly turn to the, the correct algorithms that are handed into the uh, holographic disks and still are being maintained by the Lumerian crystals that hold them. Now, you would say, what good is this disk if it's constantly changing information? The constantly changing information, the basic portions of the algorithm rhythms will stay the same. It will be the outer numbers that will be changing. With the basic algorithms at their, at their base, you would be able to figure out the beginnings of the universe and how to create all things. Right. So uh, what is the situation? What is the balance of the forces? Are 12 Magi Kings powerful enough to regain the control? According to what we know, they are. But we do not know what the future holds exactly. This ancient scriptures are vague on some points, just as your scriptures are vague. There are very many changes that have come about over the millennia and millions of years that these scriptures have existed. So it is time for certain things to come about with this planet, but we do not see the what exactly will be next because only the outcome is given and we cannot see the outcome from this vantage point with this particular information. Um. Are they benevolent enough to, I mean, is Thought evil and um, is Toth evil and the Magi Kings positive? Toth is not considered evil, but he is considered compromised. Just as human beings are compromised and have good and evil within them, would you consider yourself evil? No, but yet, you are compromised with evil and negativity and great positivity as well. This is the same with all beings created by God. Toth is such a being, although he is a master beyond most beings of many, many things. He still incorporates positive and negative within his system. How he uses those elements is what makes him good or bad. He has been able to do many good things, but he has also created some evil. So that is the same with people on your planet as well as species all over the universe. The only difference is that Toth has a higher, more advanced thought process of how to use all his information. Is Toth and Lucifer the same thing? Correct. Toth and Lucifer are one and the same, but they are not trying to create evil necessarily. L Lucifer exists so that the understanding of good can be not taken for granted. But Lucifer also exists in a way that creates his own thought processes and ways of diversion. He as an individual is different than Toad because he has to have a different thought about everything than the positive realm. So he is a dichotomy of Toad that remains a question of who Toth really is in the universe. You are a dichotomy, but you are not an equal dichotomy. Neither is Toth, but the evil portion of him is strong at times. 
so the 12 Magi Kings are not compromised or less compromised? We do not know. They have not let themselves be seen or known well enough for us to make a judgment. Um, a question popped up today, um, which is like a very old question. Why did um, uh, Hitler and the fascists um, uh, try to annihilate the Jewish race? There is great good in the Jewish race and customs. There is great understanding of knowledge and alien uh, understanding and wisdom from their ancient Kabbalah. There is great wisdom and understanding from their ancient mystics and truths. They are trying to be destroyed because that truth will come back around. And so they do not want this truth to be known. Was there something special about Jewish genetics that yes. was in incompatible with uh, uh, fascists? Yes. What was that? We are trying to figure that out as well. But there is definitely results that prove that there is incompatibilities with genome. So um, there is a genetic study that shows that uh, Ashkenazi Jews appeared uh, in Europe in, 15, in the 15th century. Did they come from another planet? Yes. Did they come to another planet in the 15th century? More than once in history, they have come to Earth. What is uh, a Yale planet? The origin of their species is unknown because they have camouflaged their genome. I see. So uh, is this conflict between Nordic and Ashkenazi uh, happening on elsewhere in the universe? Yes. Can you tell more about that? There are four planets where what you would call Jewish people exist, but they are not called Jewish people, of course. But the genome of their bases exists in four other places. So total there is five places? Yes. And are there other places in uh, Orion and uh, Pleiades? Orion, Cassiopeia, Andromeda. Andromeda, other galaxy? Yes. I see. And not Pleiades? There are hints of it in the Pleiades. A great, actually, yes, the Pleiades as well. Okay, uh, so I just uh, found the, I just found information about the Pleiades, so that makes six other places. Oh, I see. So, is it specifically about Ashkenazi or Sephardim are also involved? They are also involved. I see. Let me see the time. Um, tell me more about Krill. Our species is an ancient species. We are telepathic. We do not use language on our world to speak. We use imagery and visuals to portray what we want to communicate. Mm -hmm. Language is something of the distant past for us, as well as physicality in some ways. Mm -hmm. We can become physical because that is something that is of the past. 
So to go to the past is easy for us, but we do not need to have physicality to exist. Uh huh. So are you from this galaxy? Not this galaxy, no. Can you give us a name of your origin? Krill is the name of our species. It has been changed many times throughout the millennia. To start at the earliest areas of history for the Krill is to go back a million and a half years. Okay. Is there like a name for the star or the galaxy where you come from, coming from? I believe you only have it as a number and a letter, but we do not know what it is actually called by your people. Our people call our galaxy Rendeva. Rendeva? Rendeva. Rendeva. I see, thank you. So uh, I just, it, it really helps us to classify every, every species by their origin. Otherwise we get confused. Um, so uh, are you more ancient than Lyrans? Yes. Uh, among uh, animals of our planet, which would be most like your species? Animals? Yeah, animals, plants, insects, anyone. Fish. Interesting. I did not draw any comparisons, but we would be closest to microscopic and anomalies on your world than anything that is on the surface. We are like large amoeba. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So when you met Dr. Miller, you uh, weren't representing your body. We were not representing our actual form. Our form is no form. We can take form. And in our original form, um, we, we look more like amoeba. If you were to look at us in the form that is non-uniform, we can move about and not take a, a solid form. I see. Um, so what's your involvement in the um, Earth's activity. We are here only as a peaceful advisors, uh -huh. a giver of information and knowledge. We feel that too much knowledge was given to your planet too early. So we need to give you a different kind of information to balance out the knowledge that is dangerous with you. So that is why we're giving you the knowledge of the DNA, the knowledge of vibration and things of this nature that can be used in a very harmonious way to counteract the negativity that was given to you by other species. Excellent, I understand. So how did you uh, interact with, uh, with the military? We sent information to them, to talk to them, because they were apparently a negative force in some ways. So we wanted to speak to them about their intentions. Uh-huh. Uh, how long did your contact with the military last? Our contact lasted for, well, we are still in contact with them. Uh -huh. The thing is, 
contact lasted first time several days. Uh huh. We are still in contact, but we do not speak to them every day. Some yeah. of our people do exist with the military in places inside of human type bodies. Ah. So you are that advanced that you can imitate a human? We can imitate every species. Wow. I thought it would be just easier to take a regular human and uh, sort of get into their body, but you create a new body just specifically for your purposes. Cloning is something that is easy to do. So we clone a body instead of enter someone else's. Oh, you just clone it. That yeah. makes sense. So you have uh, ways to manipulate manipulate the biology. That's cool. Absolutely. Every species can be cloned. Where do you do this? Do you have like ships or something? Yes. Oh, so you don't use bodies, but you still have ships. Are this alive? We have to do, we have to have technology to do some of our work. That technology has to exist in real uh, places. Even though we may not look like we exist in real places, but we do, this technology is something that we can manipulate. We are on ships but we do not need them, but they, the technology is necessary for us for some things. Of course. So is um, tolls dangerous to you as well? No. We are outside so of his uh, jurisdiction. Aha. Uh -huh. How is it uh, organized? Is there like a s overseeing uh, entity or uh, a council which sort of divides the jurisdiction? He is, we are outside of his jurisdiction because he cannot manipulate our energy. So it's just naturally your you exist in a different uh, uh, world or dimension, right? Yes. Can you give a number of your dimension? Like we have a uh, uh, Pleiadian, we are, go ahead. We are beyond your, we are in the upper portions of your seventh dimension. Uh -huh, I understand. I didn't know seven dimension people would, um, would uh, have uh, ships in our dimension on uh, lower dimensions, but that's nice. So I invite healing, my, my health is very unstable and my um, mission is to decipher the DNA resonance code. And I have main trouble, my main trouble is that I uh, am functioning only a small fraction of, my, of the time. Most of the time I'm sick. So healing is invited. We will do what God is allowing us to do. Absolutely. I think my time is over with Jim. Uh, if you want to give a blessing, you're welcome. Be well. Thank you. Hello? 
Hey, Jim, welcome back. Hi. Krill was cool. Oh, you liked him? Yep. Interesting. He was, he had to go back to an ancient language to do the prayer because they don't have a language. Uh-huh. So he went back to an ancient prayer, which was sort of short, but uh -huh. one he remembered. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I like that. Uh, you know, lots of other um, species they're afraid of uh, telling something, and he seems to be willing to give information without fear. Oh yeah, he's outside of anyone's jurisdiction except God's. Uh-huh. So he's not afraid of anyone. Uh-huh. Sounds cool. All right. I have to go. I have another one coming up and I have something on the stove. <laughs> oh.